Hello, my name is Anne Tissot, and I work for a French NGO called Reserve Naturelle de France. I work uh, for a life project called Nature Adapt uh, Project. And the idea is to work on how to take into account climate change uh, for the management of protected areas. So the idea of this presentation is to present the project and our first key learnings. So first, the projects. As I said, the main objective is to help managers take climate change into account in protected areas. So the uh, objective in 2028 in, is that 80% of uh, the natural reserves in France do take it into account climate change and that other French and European protected areas are doing likewise. So we're working on three work streams. The first one, which is the main one, is to develop a method and tools for managers. So a method to assess uh, the vulnerability of the protected area towards climate change and to um, elaborate an adaptation plan. And uh, we are working also on tools uh, to help them uh, be better prepared, such as a training course for managers online. Another uh, work stream is uh, to work on all the different leverages to have the implementation on the ground. So we work on knowledge, we work on um, the political context, we work also on um, raising awareness or financial difficulties. And the third work stream is uh, to help uh, raise a dedicated network uh, with managers, but not also, also scientists, also the general public, also uh, institutions. The idea is to gather everyone that, are, that is interested in the subject of uh, adapting to climate change in protected areas and uh, so that they can exchange. And we are developing a, a collaborative platform for that. It's called natureadapt.com. Um, so as you understand, we are working for net French natural resource managers, but also more generally for French protected area managers. And what we can say is that what we are developing is also useful for uh, all managers of natural areas, not only protected. And of course, we are European projects, so we have also European targets. But not only managers are uh, our targets, um, we also work with and for climate and nature stakeholders and for the general public, because these are uh, two uh, audiences that we really need uh, to work with so that French or uh, all managers um, can really carry out the adaptation on the ground. So there are four main stages for this project. We started in mid-2018 and we finished in mid-2023. So it's a five years project and we are on the, uh, we already carried out three years. You can see at the bottom uh, the 10 partners that are engaged in this uh, project. So um, we are quite a lot and uh, it represents more than 30, per 30 persons. So uh, it's a very collaborative project. Um, so to go back to the four stages, the first one we took and we finished is that we made an assessment about uh, what's already existing, of course, for uh, managers. So all the tools and methods that are already exist to help managers uh, take into account climate change, and also the assessments of the needs from the managers. And from that, we co-designed with uh, the different partners uh, um, a new method and some tools uh, that we think would be useful for them. So after this first stage, uh, we experimented the tools and the method on six natural reserves. You can see at the bottom the six uh, natural, the six managers of those natural reserves. 
So from uh, mid 2018 to the end of 2020, they carried out the methods and used the tools and they uh, produced all um, a vulnerability assessment and an adaptation plan. And from that, we revised the method and the tools. And now we are on the third stage. It's called a test stage because we are testing again the method and the tools on new uh, on 15 new sites, new protected areas that are not only reserves, but mainly the main different uh, types of protected areas you can find in France. And then the last stage of the project will be the dissemination of the, of the main results at national and European level. So here is a quick overview of some people working on the project. Um, so now I wanted to share with you some key learnings from the experimentation. So from the work with the six natural reserves. Um, so here you have um, a map of the six uh, reserves, the pilot sites. Um, you have one on the coastline, the the Atlantic, you have the forest in the Mediterranean area, you also have a mid range mountain, uh, peatland, uh, fluvial uh, protected area, and also one in the Alps. Um, they all had a method to test, to experiment, but they all um, implemented it in different ways because it depended on the size of the protected area and its complexity, complexity and diversity. It depended also on the management plan. Is it new? Is it old? Is it in the revision phase? It depended. It depended also on the manager and its organization, what is their culture, their um, practices, um, it depended also on the local context. What is the available knowledge? Well, how are the relationships with the stakeholders? Another key learning is that adapting is a prospective and iterative process. That means not a step-by-step -step procedure or recipe or a scientific study. It's exploratory. And in our case, we lead it with questionings. So it takes some time to find the answers and they are improved along the way. Um, we work with four main interconnected elements um, in the method. Of course, the climate, past, present and future at the local level, but also the human activities that are in and around the protected area and how they are going to uh, change with climate change. Of course, natural heritage and how it's vulnerable to climate change, and also to think about probable newcomers. And finally, work also on the management practices and means. Another idea to, um, to underline is that the adaptation plan is, must be adaptive means that while it's carried out, the measures, but also the objectives should be revised according to uh, what is measured on the ground, what's happening. Another key learning again is that, and I think it's the last one, is that it's a process that changes the manager. And it's very important, it changes how they work, changes the scale, in time and space, they need to go see further in time and space than usually. It makes them work more with co-workers and also with stakeholders. And it changes how they see their protected area, in their own role. It gives them what we say, new climate change uh, glasses uh, to see the protected area and it challenges their vision of the conservation. And finally, some say that, well, some of the species they are really attached to protect are going to disappear. So it's not easy to accept and to change what you are working for. 
and then uh, gives a new positioning of the protected area and its role in the territory. Here is a quick overview of the method to carry out an assessment uh, of um, the vulnerability of the protected area towards climate change and uh, to elaborate an adaptation plan. So this is the revised version after the experimentation and the version that is uh, currently experimented, tested on the new 15 site. Here is the map of the new 15 sites that you can see in uh, green. The blue ones are the first six pilot sites. So you can see that it's already covering the, the different parts of France, but also some are small, some are big, some are on the coastline, some are in the mountain again, some are also uh, in the countryside, some are uh, marine. So we hope that with these new 15 sites, we'll have an even better methods and uh, more examples, of course. So to conclude with, I wanted to thank you for your attention, of course. I hope it was useful for you and we will have more results, of course, at the end of the project. So they will be available on our website. Uh, before we part, I wanted to um, and the like that we have some useful links on the poster. We have a project leaflet in English, we have some resources in English, but we also have some resources that are only in French. We have our collaborative platform, natureadapt.com and uh, our newsletter that are in French, but you can access them in English. So please don't be shy and go there and translate it in English because it's really easy to do it. There is a little uh, tutorial on the platform to show you um, how to access in English the website and the different contents. So you can see here the tutorial. You can just right click on the page and translate it in English. It, goes, uh, it works very well with uh, Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. Uh, it's not working, I think, with Mozilla Firefox, but uh, you can do another way because if you just do this, uh, it works only every page. So every, every time you change the page, you have to do the right click and ask translation. But you can also install a little add-on, an extension on your web browser. Uh, and it only takes really five minutes. And then you can translate any website you want in any language that is available with the extension you choose. So I can show you how it goes, uh, how it works in, in the platform. So you have it in French here. And if I ask, um, I installed a Google Translator. So if I ask uh, Google to translate it uh, in English, here you have an automatic translation. It's not perfect, but really you can understand uh, very well. I think it's pretty good, even if it's not perfect. And then uh, you can uh, go all the pages of the website and other websites, and you can see it's translated in English uh, along the way. So really you can access all the contents of the platform and you also can participate. So please do it and don't be, don't be shy. And finally, I think I'm done. Um, yes, I am. Uh, please. Sorry, I'm going back to the XP poster. Please, you have the contact here, so don't hesitate to contact us. We are always uh, really happy to uh, discuss with other people about this project and the theme of, adaptate, of the adaptation to climate change. So um, please do it if you want. If you have some questions, you can do it also. Thank you and goodbye.